Fremont family, it's so good to be with you today and to jump into God's Word together. We are finishing the book of Colossians and I trust that as you've been reading, the Spirit has been moving in you and pointing things out in you. Don't ignore that. Listen closely to where God is leading. I just wanted to share one way that I've been seeing God in this text. Verses 5 and 6 really stood out to me. They say, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. When I read this verse, I pictured a mountain ridge. I pictured hiking along a really skinny trail with two super steep drop-offs on either end. It's terrifying to hike there, and the view is beautiful. I wonder if Paul, when he talks about grace and truth throughout not just the book of Colossians, but really all of his letters. I wonder if he's trying to shepherd us on to that narrow path. Sometimes he emphasizes truth when a church starts falling off on the grace side and he says, no, come back, we need truth. Sometimes, like I think in these verses, a church is falling off on the truth side and he says, no, come back, we need some grace. I wanna keep you in this beautiful place and on this good path. Today, I'm gonna to focus on the grace part because I think that's what God is saying through this particular text. But it's important to know that grace and truth balance together from a really beautiful part of our Christian life. Friends, I think when we fall off on the truth side, we might say things that are correct, but that just aren't right. I wonder if you've been there, you've been hurting or you need help or you share, you just have some doubts and you share it with a friend and you're anticipating and you're like, I just need some care. And they say, well, just pray about it. No, oh, here's a Bible verse for you. You'll be fine. Oh, church, it hurts to hear those things. None of them are bad. Prayer is beautiful. Positivity is wonderful. Scripture is the word of God. So those answers are correct. But in that moment, that isn't what we needed to hear. We needed some grace, but we got some truth. Sometimes when we fall off onto the truth side, we miss the opportunity to speak into someone's life further. Sometimes we lose relationship when we rush right into truth without slowing down to offer grace. Paul tells us in this verse to be wise, to make the most of everything. There is wisdom in grace. There is strategy in grace. I usually think of truth as those things. I think about, oh, if I need to be wise, I need to know all the right answers. If I need to make the most of every opportunity, I need to rush right in and say what's true. But Paul here challenges us differently. He says, grace is wisdom. He says, grace is the urgent thing that you need to say. How beautiful. I love that he compares grace to salt in verse 6. I love salt, fat, acid, heat by Samin Nesrat, and in her section on salt, she talks about how salt draws out the flavor, that we'll put salt even in sweet things that we don't want to be salty because it makes it more sweet and more tasty. When we have gracious words, we like salt draw others out. We can help them be more beautiful. We help them share their feelings. We help them be honest and vulnerable. We help them say the things that they really need to say. In that and when people share that, we can bring the love of Christ into wounds and doubts and fears and hurts. When we don't rush right into truth, we have the opportunity to offer immeasurable grace through the love and power of Christ. I think what's crazy here is that Paul adds a promise at the end of these verses. He says that you'll know how to answer everyone when we have speech that is full of grace. Grace isn't about having all the answers, and I think that that's what's beautiful about it. When we know that we don't have all the answers and we just humbly show up and say, I love you, I wanna listen to you, I wanna lean in and make space for you, we are offering something beautiful and we're offering the love of Christ in the grace that we extend. Church, who can you be gracious towards today? Who needs you to take five seconds, a deep breath, and say, God, am I rushing towards truth or am I extending grace? I wonder what God will do with that in you today.